The Black Death. The Great Plague of London in 1665 killed hundreds of thousands of people. This plague or disease first came to Europe in the 14th century and was known as the Black Death. It killed between 30% to 60% of the population of Europe. The Black Death also killed millions of people in Asia. At the time, no one knew why it started or why it ended. The Black Death mostly disappeared for 300 years, and then it returned in a big way, killing many more people. What was the Great Plague, and what happened? What was the plague? The first signs of the plague were a rash, pain all over the body, and a fever. People also had swelling in their necks, arms, or legs. They became dizzy and felt lost. Soon, boils or bumps appeared on their skin, which could be red, yellow, or black. The plague was sometimes called the Black Death because of the black boils. These boils caused people to die in great pain within four to seven days of catching the disease. It was a terrible way to die. The Black Death returns. For nearly 300 years, London was safe from any large-scale return of the Black Death. Then, in 1665, suddenly death was everywhere again. This time, it was known as the Great Plague. People were afraid. They knew the Great Plague would kill many people. No one knew for sure why the plague came back or how people got sick with it. Why did some people get sick while others did not? Doctors at the time did not know how to make people better. The doctors' clothes were designed to both help people and scare away the disease. The plague spread quickly. About 15 to 20 percent of the population in London died. There was one week where more than 7,000 people died in London. So many people were getting sick and starting to die that the government had to take action. What would they do? What could they do? What should the government do? The situation became so bad that in May 1665, the government decided to lock the sick people and families in their homes so the disease could not spread. The government ordered that any house must be closed tightly for 40 days if there was a person with the plague inside. In the early days of the Great Plague, many people left the city. However, the government decided to close the whole city of London. Which meant that no one else could leave the city. As London was a walled city, closing it was easy. Life during the plague. Life in the city of London in the summer of 1665 was terrible. The walled city was overcrowded. There was no clean water. Rats were everywhere, and the air was dirty. Very few gates led out of the city, so few people could leave. Everything was hot and dirty. Toilets were emptied in the streets, which attracted flies and fleas. People wanted to escape the city's walls, but they needed a special paper to get out. The church leaders were the local neighborhood government at that time. These leaders gave out the papers, but usually only to rich friends. Rich people could pay money to the church to get the special papers so they could leave, but poor people did not have that option. Trapped in the city. Poor people were trapped in the city, and the plague moved quickly. The number of sick and dead people was rising, and cemeteries were full. The government tried to help collect and bury the dead bodies by sending death carts around the city. The drivers shouted, "Bring out your dead!" and people would carry out the dead bodies and put them onto the carts to be buried in a large hole together. The church also paid poor people called searchers to help with closing the houses. These searchers went through the city and painted a red cross on any house that had a person with the plague inside. These houses were then closed up for forty days, during which time the sick person died, and often other family members died as well. 
These other family members either caught the plague or died for other reasons. If the families had any money, they secretly paid the searchers. They asked the searchers to say that the sick person had some other disease besides the plague. Why would they do that? If the sick person had some other disease, then more family members had a chance to live. If a house was marked as a plague house, then many family members died. Some family members even died because they ran out of food. Looking for answers. The government was continuing to look for answers to the plague. They felt that dogs and cats carried the plague, so the government ordered the people to kill all dogs and cats. How would you do that? Rat poison. The government killed these animals by using rat poison. In fact, they killed so many animals that the city ran out of rat poison. In the end, this bad idea led to a bigger problem. Another terrible idea. The government also thought that the plague moved through the air. To cure the bad air, the government wanted to fill the air with smoke. Therefore, people burned fires and smoked tobacco, a lot of tobacco. Even children smoked. So inside the city of London, during the hot summer, the air was filled with smoke, and both dead bodies and rats were everywhere. What a terrible way to live! News gets better. Finally, at the start of 1666, the number of deaths from the plague started to go down. Fewer and fewer people with the plague were found. The government decided that it was safe to live in London again. People started to move back into the city. In February of 1666, the king again made his home in London. The Great Plague was over. What we know now. It was not until many years later that scientists figured out how the plague spread. The most common way was through flea bites. Infected fleas from rats would get onto people and bite them. People could also get the plague by breathing it directly into their lungs. This was uncommon but much more deadly. In Europe in the 1600s, more and more goods were traded between countries and along with those goods were some uninvited guests, rats. Rats loved to feed on all of those traded goods, and they lived in the dark areas of the ships. The ships carried the rats, and the rats carried the fleas. Now we know that the plague was caused by a germ living in some fleas, and London in 1665 was the perfect breeding ground. The summer was hot, the streets were dirty, and many people lived in poverty. The plague killed humans quickly, but it did not kill animals as fast. The fleas with the plague traveled on rats and moved around London freely. As we know, cats kill rats, but the government had killed all the cats, so the disease spread even more quickly. In addition, all of the rat poison was used up. This meant that the two main ways to kill the rats living in London were not available. What a mistake! Lessons for the future If the government had not decided to kill all the cats and had not used up all of the rat poison, the Great Plague might have ended sooner. The Great Plague killed about one out of every five of the people living in London, but it could have been far less. In the future, we must be sure to find the cause of our problems before we try to fix them. If we act too soon without knowing the cause, we may make things much worse. That is a lesson for all of us to learn.